Hey traders, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to access charts on the Trend Spider trading software. And from there, I'll be showing you how to configure things like technical indicators, theme colors, background colors of your charts, and candle types. I'll be showing you how to add drawing tools, customize your workspace, and once we're all done, I'll be showing you how to save it for future use. Now, the first thing I'd suggest you do is add a symbol to your chart. For example, I currently have the Dow up on my chart here, but if I wanted to customize that, I have two different options. One, I can choose from the watch list built in on the right hand side of my software here. Any symbol that I choose on from this list will automatically apply it to my chart and reconfigure it for me. Or what I can do is left click in the symbol search bar in the left hand side of my screen here in the top left delete the current search function and go ahead and type in the symbol of my choice. For example, if I wanted to access the micro E-mini SMP 500, I can type in MES. One thing I would mention is this is a multi-asset platform. So you'll be finding products for things like stocks and crypto and Forex. To make it easier on yourself since so many things will populate within this window, I'd suggest looking in the left hand side here, which shows you which asset that product falls under. They're typically grouped under asset. So if I'm only interested in futures, just scroll down to the futures section here. Here's my MES uh, 2023 continuous contract, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And I can go ahead and click select. If I like uh, left click that, it'll go ahead and add it to my chart. This time, let's do something similar, but I'll be creating a watch list and just showing you how you can select it from the watch list and more importantly, create your own watch list. So in the top left hand corner to the right of the symbol search bar, there's a star here. I can go ahead and click add to active watch list, create new watch list. I can go ahead and type something in here for so, so for example, since we're interested in futures, we can type in future symbols. Right now I have the MES on my list. If there's any other symbols I wanna add, I can type it in here. So for example, let's say I also wanna add the MNQ. Here's the MNQ contract. I could also add something like the MCL, which is micro crude oil futures. Type in MCL, again, it's separated by asset class. So I scroll down to futures, find th the three contract, which represents a year 2023. Go ahead and add it and go ahead and click create. Now from here, I have a custom watch list. I still have the Dow Jones 30 watch list set to my product or to my platform. So I wanna click this drop down list. You can see there's quite a bit of different options here. The one you just created should be at the top. You can see I have mine, future symbol. If for whatever reason you don't see it or it's just too flooded, you can check or uncheck any of these options here to filter um, from the different criteria here. If I uncheck everything besides yours, and these are only things that I've created, for example, mine will be right at the top here, future symbols. I go ahead and click on that. You can see here are the three products that I've just added for myself. So I can go ahead and click and I'll efficiently swap between all three right on the fly, right through my watch list. Now from here, if you're looking to do multiple charts, there's different workspace layouts. To the right of this star, from the watch list uh, creation button I just showed you. Here is a multi-chart layout. By default, it's set to one symbol uh, with one chart, but you can do two charts with one symbol. So for example, if I wanted two crude oil charts, each with their own different time frame, I could choose something like a two chart layout with one symbol. This is a more of a um, horizontal chart layout, but if I wanted to, I could do a vertical layout like this three charts with one symbol, four charts with one symbol, or you can do a multi-symbol view, which essentially allows you to compare four different charts. So if I do something like this, I can go ahead and click edit this chart. And then from there, each of these charts becomes its own separate functioning chart. You can add different indicators to each chart. You can add different symbols. So for example, I could have the ES on one, then I could add the SPY on another. So you can get quite complex with this. It is really cool. If you want to set it back to the default layout, all you need to do 
is click this uh, drop down here and you can go back to one by one to get back to the default layout. Now, one quick thing I would like to mention when you are using this multi symbol layout functionality that it actually does open a new tab. So if you do want to get back to the main platform itself, you can just close this tab or keep it minimized and just tab over back to your original workspace. So just keep that in mind when using this, it actually does open a whole nother tab or in another window. So now that we've shown you how to access charts and get your symbols on charts, let's do things like customizing them from here. You can customize the time frame or the chart type in the top left of the actual chart itself. So for example, here's where you can choose from line, bar, candle, hollow candle, raindrop, or Heikenashi. Here you can choose the time frame of your chart. By default, it's on 65 minutes, but feel free to choose from any of these options here. Next up, if you want to customize things like your chart color, your background color, candle colors, things of that nature, you'll want to click on the cog wheel for that. Click on this cog wheel on the top left here, and you can see the different options we can enable or disable. Things like market price lines, crosshair visibility, uh, different logos, whether it's a trend spider logo or you upload your own, you can do that. Uh, you can show chart header, grid lines, and the color for those grid lines. Watermarks, as I mentioned, candle uh, colors, you can do so here, and you can swap through the different chart types here and customize them individually. From here, you can go to data. You can change a scale type from linear or logarithmic. You can change your time zone and you can uh, display things like extended hours for equities. Of course, since I'm using futures, this is not available and I can display trading period breaks or market closes. From here, you'll probably want to know how to configure indicators. So if you look in the top left of your platform, You'll see things like trends, indicators, candle patterns, chart patterns, heat maps. So this is where you want to customize your charts with indicators to do so. You can click on the green indicators button, or excuse me, you want to click to the three button vertical buttons to the right of that, which will open up the manage indicators window. From here, you can add indicators by simply searching for a specific indicator or searching for one, um, that you'd like. For example, let's say I'm interested in something like a moving average. I can type in moving average. And when I do all the different options related to my search will populate. Let's say, for example, I wanted to do a MACD. I click on this option here. It gives me the different periods of fast, slow, and the different signals I can customize. I can change what symbol this MACD is applied to. By default, it's set to current, but if I want to customize that to something else, I can. And then I can also change the colors, the thickness of my lines, signal colors, positive or negative colors, and click apply. So here we now have a MACD plotted in the sub window under my chart. If I wanted to remove this indicator, I can go back to those three vertical lines and all my indicators will be added here on the right hand side. Now I'll show you what this looks like in a second, but to remove this indicator, there's an X in the top right of this manage indicator window. You can click on this X, click apply, and then it will remove it. Now there's another way to do this. Let's just show you in one second. Let's add two more indicators. For example, let's do RSI. We'll do a stochastic RSI. Again, here are my customization options. For simplicity, I will leave this as the default. And let's add something else again, click on the manage indicators button. Maybe this time we'll do something like, let's do a simple moving average. I type in simple. Here we go. We have it right here and I can click apply. So now we have a simple moving average with a stochastic RSI. Let's say I want to remove both. Well, you'll see all my indicators are now listed right here in this right hand column. You can see that remove indicator icon is here on each specific one. So I can add or remove indicators as needed right through this window by clicking X on each of them and then apply. Now another method to remove indicators, this only temporarily, temporarily removes them, but you can basically hide indicators 
by left clicking this green indicators button you could see it basically will flash them on or off depending on how you have this activated if you want indicators to display click it so it's highlighted green if you want to hide everything click it again it'll turn white it'll hide everything from there if you don't want to use the manage indicators window uh, to customize or modify your indicators you can also use in the top left here in this small indicator window the three vertical dots next to each indicator and you'll be given a simplified manage indicator window that allows you to customize and either change colors or change the aggregation of your indicators so feel free to take advantage of this now just wrapping this up a few other things i'd like to mention one is drawing tools on the left hand side of your screen here in the side panel are all your drawing tools that are available if you need a different view of this side panel you can actually click this arrow in the bottom left hand side of the screen I had already expanded it before I started recording. This is what it looks like by default. Here is the expanded view. To draw, all you need to do is choose the drawing tool of your choice. Left click the start point, draw your line, your square, your trend line, whatever it is, and then left click the end point. For this, if you want to modify this in any way or remove it, once you've drawn these lines, you can just left click on the drawing tool of your choice then right click it and you'll see the different options. You can clone drawings, you can remove specific drawings, or you can remove all drawings on a specific symbol or just remove this specific indicator or drawing tool, excuse me. Let's say I had 20 rectangles on my screen. If I choose this option, it'll only delete this rectangle. And however, it'll keep this vertical ray I have here. You can also do properties. So if you want to change things like colors, you can do it right within this menu. So again, this is done just by left clicking the tool, right clicking it, and then getting whatever options you need through this context window. The final thing I'd like to mention is one convention of saving that I think is useful. Uh, TrendSpider uses workspaces that you can efficiently navigate through. If you want to access your workspaces, you can left click the profile icon, which if you hover over it, is this account and subscription icon in the top right of your software here. You can log out from here. You could reset your password. You can actually change the theme of the whole platform. But more importantly, why I'm bringing you here, you here is the switch workspace, uh, workspace functionality. If you click on this, you'll see you actually have several workspaces you can choose from. What we're working on right now is the default layout. There is the multi view symbol view that I showed you early in the video that opens up a new tab, or you can even add new and start customizing. So I really like using this just to organize myself. If I have multiple different asset classes that I'm organized or focused on, I can organize my workspace based on asset class. If I want to have a workspace for just micros, or just e-minis, or maybe something like just the energy products, just metals, you can organize it as you see fit. This is really personal preference and it comes down to customization. The things I've just mentioned are a couple tips and tricks that I could offer that maybe will make your life easier when navigating through, but really feel free to organize this and save as you need. If you wanna create more workspaces, just click add new. Just go ahead, type in a name for it. Doesn't matter what it is, whatever is best for you. Click proceed. And now you have this default workspace that you can start working with. Feel free to customize it using all the different options I just showed earlier in the video. We hope this video helped. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below or visit our forum community.optimistfutures.com and we have, we'll happily help you out there. Thanks for watching and we hope this video helped.